In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My name is Father Philip Smith of the Kent Estuary Catholic Churches in the southern part of Cumbria. And I'm going to give a homily on the first Sunday of Lent, year A, in the Catholic cycle. Of course, you're, as always, advised to have a look at those readings and to see what comes to you. Often God speaks through his word. That's rammed home in the gospel of the temptations of Jesus in the desert when he fights off the temptations of the, uh, of the devil through quoting scripture in three cases. And we can defend our lives against the attack of the devil, temptations, which is very real by focusing on scripture and saying, Lord, give me the grace and strength to follow your word. But let's go to the readings themselves. The first one is Genesis, the fall of mankind, the, uh, the idea of the idyllic time was in the Garden of Eden, was a time when we were in right relationship with God. We walked with God in the cool of the evening. You've got to imagine um, an eastern garden, a big wall around it, a little paradise in a, a deserty area. So cool of the evening. And what happened was, however, one of the trees inside that garden, that enclosed space, paradise means an enclosed garden that's protective from wild animals and therefore allowed to flourish. Um, what uh, uh, has been planted in there is all sorts of trees and plants and so on that were good to eat, with fruit that was good to eat. But there was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and Adam and Eve were tempted to eat of that tree. In other words, uh, to say, we will, as it were, decide what is good and evil. We will be in charge. God will not be in charge. And the result was disaster. Everything fell to bits. Go on to the second reading. Uh, but before that, the psalm, the, the response is, have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Basically, we're saying, like Adam and Eve, at times we try and do things our way and get in a mess. Blot out our offences, Lord, in your compassion. Wash me more and more from my sin. In other words, look, any bad habits... I want to be eradicated from my life. Then we have the letter of St Paul to the Romans. And um, Paul gives us a statement of hope. He says, well, sin entered to the world through the decision of one man, Adam and Eve. Yes, free will was exercised wrongly and a right mess followed that affects us even today. We have wars and revolutions and hatred and all the rest of it. We needn't go into that. We know about it. But he says, look, Adam prefigured the one to come, Jesus. That will, his coming is a gift that will outweigh the fall of mankind. It, it, it can counteract everything that went wrong if we follow Jesus. Death reigned over everything. Everything fell to bits. It was futile. But Jesus Christ will alter that. Um, we were made righteous. In other words, we were given the opportunity of living in harmony with God again. Finally, the gospel, as I say, it's on the temptations in the desert. Jesus, before he went out on his ministry, went to struggle 
in the desert place. And there the devil uncovered himself. Today the devil is there. He is the source of temptations. But the devil uncovered himself. So it was made quite clear. And he basically said, um, without so many words, I'm going to take over your mission, Jesus. You do it my way. I'll, I'll help you. And to make it so much easier. And you'll be able to be so effective in the world. If you do it my way. In other words, destruction. Because he tempted Adam and Eve in the first place. He temp tempts the new Adam. One who's going to counteract the damage done. To derail him. OK, those are a few thoughts on the readings. Now, what we do have is a, a pastoral letter from our Bishop Paul. Oh, wait a minute. I don't think you can see that very well. But what I've taken from it is the lovely statements that our Bishop Paul makes, or main statement. Bishop Paul says Lent should be a time of encouragement for us. We've got this odd idea that, you know, we've got to really get hard on ourselves and really screw up courage and our willpower. And then if we really have a hard Lent and make it hard on ourselves, then, G then God will be pleased. Well, that's got some merit, but actually it's wrong. Lent is a time to be encouraging. We should think, as Bishop Paul says later on in his letter, first of all, of not what we can do for God, but what God wants to do for us, if we allow him. And the thing that turns Lent on its head, really, God wants to us to mend the relationship broken by Adam and Eve at the fall of mankind. Adam and Eve, in effect, want, wanted to deny they were children of God and go their own way. This resulted in a continuing disaster for the world which we see today. I needn't mention anywhere in the world where Things are going wrong. God, on the other hand, wants us to enjoy all the security and contentment of being loved children of God. And we all know what small, that small children thrive in a secure, secure, loving family with security. We are such children in God's eyes. But to come to God... We have to break our addiction to false independence. And that's what Lent is about. To living our way regardless of God. Now, in the Gospel of the Temptations, in the desert, Jesus shows us we can break our addiction to self-centred living, self-destructive habits of life. It is possible. The wish to do it our own way rather than God's way. Uh, this uh, gospel shows us that dependence on ways other than God's ways are really following the ways of the devil. And we can break the devil's hold in our life. So my little prayer and response would be, and I do encourage you, by the way, to read the letter or listen to it, perhaps in church, of uh, the bishop. It will be on the diocesan website. Our prayer then, in response to God speaking to us in the readings, might be something like this. Encouraging God, you offer in Lent a time when, above all, we can come back to you with all our hearts. Help me to use the discipline of Lent to allow you back into my life. Help me to resist all the temptations to do things my way and to follow your ways 
to contentment and fulfilment as a beloved child of God. Amen. For those who are members of our Kent History Catholic Churches, I do ask you to look at our newsletter, our very overfilled newsletter. I'm always having at the behest of our parish secretary to cut down uh, what's been put in the newsletter. There's just too much of it happening in our various areas. However, we can be overwhelmed by all that's being offered, uh, not only by our church itself, but also uh, by the community of our brothers and sisters in other churches around us. May I suggest that you fix on, say, two things and take those as your emphasis for Lent. Remembering you're just getting your life back so that God can enter in the encouraging God. God bless you and keep you. Thank <laughs> you.